Hello. This is weird. Your good girl pops. So, if anyone is watching, this will be a little groom of Poppy, who is my working cocker spaniel, who gets clipped off. You wouldn't traditionally clip a working cocker, you'd probably hand strip them. But once you clip, that's what you do, you go back. So anyway, let me crack on. Ho ho, I've already got one watcher. Please with that. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is start off with prepping her. And then we're gonna crack on. We're the groom, aren't we, little girl? Yes, we are. So what I do first is health check. You wanna do a health check, as always. We look at the head, look at her mouth. Check her teeth, you're missing one at the front, aren't you, sweetie? Look into the ears. I want to see if there's any, any problems. As a groomer, you can't diagnose anything because that would be bad, because that is what vets are for. However, you can suggest to your, to your peeps, to your peeps to actually go to the vet if you suspect anything. So with ears and stuff, you're looking to see if there's any hair down the ear canal, because if there is, that can attract moisture and moisture can then lead to infections, yeast infections, nasty stuff. Now I'm going down the rest of her body, feeling, feeling her legs, round her body, any lumps, bumps, anything you don't want, and we, we go from there. So, I don't know if anyone messages anything. Hang on a sec, I'm gonna put on some music because it makes it boring. All right, you wanna sit? Sit? See, perfectly trained. You wait there, Pop, and I'll put on some music, okay? How about... That'll do. So yeah, anyway, so I've done my health check and I think she's looking pretty healthy to me. And I'm gonna clip her nails. I tend to clip nails before the bath because on the odd occasion where you might cut the nails slightly too short and they're bleeding, you don't get their nice clean coat nice and bloody, basically. But she's got black nails, so I just take a little bit off at a time. Being sure to avoid the quick. Also, having a look at the dew claws because that is always important, isn't it? Oh, good girl. Should we do this one? Here we do this one. So, yeah, don't mind me. Clipping the nails. This is probably making excellent live videos, isn't it? Poppy's a bit shy of the camera, so don't worry about that. So, that's her front. I'm going to do her back now. You're good girl, go on then. When you're clipping the nails, the sort of general rule of thumb is you don't want the nails to be touching the floor, touching the table when you're, when they're standing still. So if they are, they need to be taken down. But if you don't know what you're doing, please do take them to a groomer because you don't want to be hacking off their nails and then exposing the nerve which spurts blood absolutely everywhere and that is not what we want to do. Anyway, so nails are clipped. I am now going to do a hygiene trim. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to clean out, clear out the inside of her thighs and if it was a sort of like a cockapoo, you'd also be clipping out over the arsehole because there is always a lot of dried poo there, which is not ideal. So I'm gonna lift her leg as if she was a boy cocking it. And I'll just do, put that away. And I'm using a 10 blade, which leaves 1.5 mil of hair because it takes it nice and short. And the reason for this is hygiene reasons. If she needs to go for a week and there's plenty of hair there, it gets stuck in it and it's disgusting. So I'm gonna turn around. Oh, you mind your bum. And I'm gonna do the other leg. And now that I'm doing that, done that hygiene trim, I'm going to trim her pads. So this is basically, she's got nice short pads anyway, but what this does is takes the hair out in between which can easily get knotted and matted. And if it does get knotted and matted, it can hurt. So they're effectively like walking on stones and that is not what you want. But luckily, hers are actually all right. Actually, there's nothing in that one. No point clipping that one. 
but I have had it before where I've had to actually go down to a smaller blade to take the curved out because it is not nice to have it there. Oh, I'm gonna turn her around and do this last one as well. Keep it up, thank you. I don't know, is that anyone actually saying that? Or is that, <laughs> that might actually be TikTok telling that. Oh well, right, anyway. So the other reason you wanna do this, because it allows you to take out any grass seeds that can get caught in the pads, which is not ideal. You're giving me your paws, because you're such a good girl. Yes, you are. The other thing I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this coat away from the bottom of her ear. You've gotta be really careful if you're doing this. If you're not trained in it, don't do it. Yes, Joey the Time Lord, thank you. Keep it up, I'll take that. Um, you've got to, you've gotta be really careful because basically you can get skin caught in your clippers and you do not want to hurt your dog. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. But effectively, you can make sure you're okay by keeping out everything out of the way and just doing that. And this is good to do on cockers well, <laughs> a lot of dogs, because it stops their knots and mats getting stuck there, which is obviously not ideal. There we are. That is that done. She's looking fine. I oh, knew you were a good girl. This is my first ever live, by the way, so uh, please don't judge. I'm now just gonna brush through her coat slightly with my slicker brush and Grab my comb and just check for any knots because what you want to do is have the coat in as good a condition as possible. And if this was an actual client rather than my dog, I'd then I'd be putting her in a bath now and get her use some nice shampoo and conditioner, give them a face treatment, and just get the coat really nice and clean, looking good, and then that allows for a lovely finish from that. It's obviously what you want when you're running a business is to give people a lovely service. Anyway, so there we go. I'm now gonna start clipping her. And for her, I use my 7F blade. Nothing that looks lovely. Nothing that looks lovely. Do you think it looks lovely? Do you? But yeah, so I go for a 7F on her. And what I do, well, I'll show you as I'm doing it. Cause that makes, oh, oh. There we are. Okay, so I'm gonna start by, I always follow the same method because it just makes life easier. I go from occiput, the occipital bone, which is right at the back, sort of you can feel over your dog's head. There's a bone at the back, that is your occiput. Well, I'm not, it's not your occiput, it's your dog's occiput. I go from there, I go down to the base of the tail. I then come around the sides of her neck, over the point of her shoulder to her elbows. From the elbows and like around the belly, what I'll do there is I'll actually leave a bit of a skirt line. She hasn't got much of one, but if it was another dog, you'd be going from like the elbows to the tuck up, you'd just be skimming off so they can have a nice skirt. And then I'll be coming down her legs. But she's very easy to trim because she is just basically a clip off. So let's go, we're gonna start here. We'll see what happens. Oh, important thing to do is when you're clipping a dog like her, anything which is sort of silk coated, you want to follow the direction of the coat or else you're gonna put layers into it and then it will look really stupid. Just checking I've got the correct blade. But yeah, so from the octopus, work my way down the top line. Tell you what, you can really notice when you haven't bathed your dog beforehand when doing this. Anyway, I'm gonna come around on the sides of her neck. Not moving the clippers too fast because otherwise, that will make it look, well you just make it, you don't get the nicest finish. Okay, what is difficult is doing this when on a black dog like her, it's quite difficult to see where you've been. However, I'll do this like several times I'll go over because you can just make sure that you're getting her off. Get her off, that's a bit weird. Um, you know, you need to make sure that like, you're getting all the coat off and making it look as smart as anything. Right, and now, how long did it take for you to get as good as you are now? So, I started training back in 2019 and um, the place where I trained, I didn't know this until I started, um, it, I trained with a woman who's the highest like 
uh, qualified dog groomer in the whole of the UK and like she's quite renowned in the grooming world so I kind of landed on my feet but because I trained with her you've just had to you have to know your stuff um, so we know a lot about dog theory about what you should be doing and what you shouldn't but it's surprising sort of how many dog groomers don't know you just you just think it's giving dogs haircuts but you actually need to know so much to, to actually do it pretty much because you want to know sort of so for example if you were hand stripping a dog you don't want to use a stripping blade because as soon as you cut the coat that will affect how it grows back hence why once you start cutting cutting a spaniel's coat you need to start putting it back yeah yeah very fortunate indeed it is yeah so it's actually yeah it's really good for me to learn that way and I, I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to it I really enjoy it but anyway yeah so what I've done now is brushing the coat back up I've sprayed a little bit of spray on it just to give it some like a bit of, it's effectively like a bit of gel but all it is is water just so I can brush the coat back up get my clippers again and I'm going to just go over it all over again because what this will do is allow you to pick up any of those untidy ends and you'll find it's actually quite amazing how much of a difference you get from going over it the second time than your first but what I will be doing I always go over the coat three, four, maybe even five times basically you keep clipping until the, the hair stops coming off. What was I doing before dog grooming? And what made you take it up? <laughs> I have been running a dog walking business for five years. And uh, basically I wanted to add another string to my bow. I didn't know whether to go for dog, uh, dog training or whether to go for, for dog grooming. And uh, I decided on grooming. I'm not really sure. Actually no, I can tell you why. We tried to put Poppy in to get groomed and absolutely nowhere in the whole of the area was taking on new clients. So I thought, if there's that much going round, I may as well have a bit of this pie myself. And uh, I love it. So in fact, it's very fortunate. It's nice. I work on a one-to-one -one basis. I prefer that than working in a salon. Dogs can get a bit overwhelmed. And um, yeah, it's just nice to be able to get a bit of connection with them. But Poppy is a typical Spaniel who does not enjoy being groomed. She just kind of freezes on the table. And when she thinks it's finished, she'll be so buzzing with herself. What I'm gonna do in a second, so I've done, what is this, my third? I'm going over this coat, and it's really difficult. I probably should have chosen a better dog, but as for my first life, I thought I'd use my own. Um, it's difficult to tell what, what's actually looking different. So I'm gonna grab the camera in a second and uh, show you the two sides. and I'll show you. Your tips will come in handy next grooming session we have. Yeah, perfect. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. But anyway, so look, here we can see, I don't know, can you actually turn on the camera? So I've clipped along here, and then this is her fluffy side. So it's very little difference, but I clip her quite regularly because I just want her to look nice. But um, it's a nice sort of smooth finish, and that's because I'm following the direction of the coat. If I wasn't, you'd be finding like all these layers in it, it'd be looking a bit shit. Excuse that, but yeah, it's uh, it's hopefully, hopefully it doesn't look too bad, but what I will do in the future is use a dog where you can actually tell the difference. But, you know, I'll flip around. And I'm gonna do the other side. Yes, darling. I'm gonna do the other side. Oh dear. Do you ever just look at your dogs and just think, I love you so much, I just don't even know how much I can love you, because, I do it all the time. Anyway, right, so this is the other side. And although I'm only clipping up to the tail for now, I will clip onto it. So traditionally, a working cocker would have their tails docked and 
obviously you're not, we don't do that now unless you're actually working the dog, but she's a pet, so she doesn't have it. But I just clip onto it, sort of as far as it would be if it was docked, and then I make it into a flag tail, which, which yeah, it's just a, an effect on it, but basically it sort of, you know, gives a nod back to what, what they would have had. But then, obviously, it's a customer of something different, we can do that. Some people just have them completely clipped off altogether, but I like there to be a bit of... Right, what I'll do actually is I'm going to go against the, uh, the coat to see if it makes... Right, there we go. Can you see that? Let's see if we can see this. So what I've done is I've actually gone in a different direction on her coat to see if you can see what happens. So here, I don't think you can see it in this light, but basically here, it's all looking layered and a bit rubbish. And that's because I didn't follow the direction of the coat. So we can remedy that by, by flipping over it. And if not, what we'll do is I can always get my blending scissors and I can blend it in. Which is always good. Always good. Slowly, slowly file them down, and then you'll find they'll come down on walking on pavements a lot more help. 
beer and free groomers. I love that you're considering dogs well, but yes, you are a good person. Yeah, you want to make it. It's, let's be honest, dog grooming is about the welfare of the dog. It's, it's, it's nice to make them look pretty, but the reason we're doing it is so they're happy, they're healthy, and you can just keep them in good nick. Alright, don't try filing then if he's going to murder you in his sleep. In which case, try and take him out for lots of walks on uh, on the pavement. Because that should, in theory, take them down. But if they're so long that they're curling in on themselves and it's going to cause a problem, you might have to take them to a vet. Which isn't ideal, it's not the cheapest way. Or you think to a groomer, you might find that um, they might behave better for a groomer if, if you're not around, you never know. Um, Say if it was me, and I couldn't, couldn't clip his nails, I just wouldn't charge you. So if you can find a groomer like that, you might, you might have it come across all right. I do check over all the time just to make sure that it is looking neat. One thing to be careful, I'll speak about welfare of dogs, when you're using a slicker brush, try it on yourself if you're not using it for, because you can give a dog slicker burn, which effectively you cut its skin open and it's not going to be pleasant and it hurts. So um, yeah, always try it on yourself, just know what, what you can do, what you can't do, and uh, yeah, work with that. So she, to me, no, grab it there, it's all good. It's important to follow a method when you are grooming your dog because otherwise you lose track of where you are if I only got one foot bigger than the other or something like that. Do I scratch ball with sandpaper stapled to a wood board and teach them to pour it? That's a good idea. That's a really nice idea actually, yeah. I'm glad we're helping each other. That's lovely. Right, okay. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to teach So when we're looking at her throat, round here, you can, I don't know, can you see? Basically, if I was to clip straight down there, you can leave like two exposed bits, which can look a bit silly. She's just giving me her paw, she's a really good girl. So you want to avoid that. So what I do is I always sort of skim off with my clippers to allow them to, uh, to leave that bit. And then what I'll do is I'll come in with scissors and use my blending scissors to take it down. But the other thing to do, which is really important with the throat, right, I'll show you, is to hold the head up. Because the problem is, otherwise you can have flaps of skin, and when you can, it, it will like, they could get caught, they could just, yeah, it's not always good things. Yeah, yeah, thin with chunkers. Yeah, chunkers, blenders, and if you're feeling really brave, you can just go with your straights, but that's not ideal if you're not good at your straights, because then they just go everywhere. But anyway, yeah, so you hold the head up, come here, just skim off. So I'm just coming off like that. And you hold the ears out of the way. Because I mean, if you want to cut the ears off, you can do, but if you want to keep them, then you don't want to be taken away too much coat there. But this is another part of the coat where the di you can find that the directions can be going in lots of different ways. And then if you're, if you're just going straight down and not following the direction of the coat, you then find it looks a little bit layered again. So what I'll do is just give a little spray. There it is. Brush up. And if you are interested, I am going to put this on YouTube, just so if you want to re-watch it, I'm sure it is thrilling. But, um, just because I think it's nice, if people do want to see what I'm up to, they can do. You can watch back. 
by no means am I an educator of grooming. This is just how I do, do my thing. So that is body and throat done. And it's also quite important when you can to keep your table clear. Yes, my darling, you lovely girl. Keep your table clear because otherwise you can end up trimming uh, trimming the, the nails. What clippers do you use? These are Andis some things. I don't know, they're like Andis Pulse 2s or something, I think they're called. Have I considered dog training? I did consider dog training for a bit, but um, I decided to do grooming instead pretty much. It's always a potential in the future, but I find in the dog training world there are a lot of, uh, a lot of opinions. I don't do well with that, so unfortunately I just kind of stick to my own thing. It means it's just me and the dogs, because otherwise it's educating people, isn't it? Who grooms me? Well, <laughs> no one. That's why I look like a shabby, shabby person. Right, anyway, what am I doing? Right, so once I've done the body and like with her, I've clipped onto the legs. I wouldn't usually touch the legs until a little bit later because what I'm going to do now is trim the feet and then I like to style the coat into the feet. If I, <laughs> if you're a dog, you want me to groom you. Yeah, that could be a bit weird, but I mean, if you were a dog, I'd be happy to. Anyway, those are the wrong scissors. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give her some tight feet, which will hopefully they'll make her look good. So what I'll do now, she's actually quite a menace because she's been chewing on her feet at the moment because she's, um, opinions you mean total bell ends, I'm <laughs> assuming. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was a polite way of saying it. But yeah, um, so her feet here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush this up and then I'm going to use my blending scissors just to take it down and make it nice and tight. Some people like round feet, but I mean, she hasn't got enough coat to do that. So what I'll do is I'll trim these first. So to do that, I'm taking my slicker brush, brush it up. But yeah, she hasn't got too much coat there actually because um, she, she's she been nibbling at it, which is a shame. But she'll, uh, she's got medication now, so hopefully she'll be better. You want to be careful when doing this because you obviously don't want to chop their toes off. However, some trainers are the last method, it's an unregulated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's difficult and you, like, I mean, I don't, I don't want to slag off any other dog workers or groomers or anything, but because it's unregulated, and it's also behind closed doors. So you never really know what's going on. Like, obviously you should hope they have CCTV up you don't actually know if they know what they're doing, which is a real, but could be shame. And you might get a lovely groom out of it, but you don't want them doing that if they've been mean to your dog, do you? So that's why the main focus for me is on welfare. I mean, I do, I like to try my best to make the dogs look as good as possible. I know I'm not the best and I am working on improving, always improving, but the main thing for me is that the dogs come in They've been happy, and then they leave happy. So, that, I shall now show you her toes to see if you think they look any different. So, if you see here, I've taken the, that, that fluff away, so now you can sort of see the individual toe. So, I think it looks smart. It works for me. It works for Poppy. Yes, I know, my little girl. You're being a perfect model for me. She actually has more coat on her back toes, so there'll be more of a difference there. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the length down to no shorter than what I'm going to take the, her legs down to. Again, if she wasn't already clipped, I would still do this to her toes because 
again, if you're leaving the coat there, it's just more for stuff to get, get in the way of, which is not ideal. You're giving me kisses, thanks girl. That's really kind. That's really kind. And always I find just going over it as many times as possible. How old is Poppy? How did you find her? So Poppy is my dog and she is five years old. And she's a lovely girl. Obviously I'm biased. But um, yeah, so we got her off my partner's mum who had one litter from her, her dog and um, told us we were having Poppy. So uh, yeah, that's absolutely fine by us. Cost us a Chinese. Yeah, you cost us a whole Chinese. Mind your toes. So what I'm going to do now <laughs> on this one, thank you, is take away this coat just around the bottom. Just because it will smarten it up slightly. There we are, sweetheart. Right, now, here's a whole little back balls. So this, this back, her back left, no, left, yeah, that's left, is the most difficult one I find to trim because it's just an awkward position. But look, here, I can just let it sit down and I can crack on with it. Toe beans, I see that. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just, again, trimming this out. And if you didn't see earlier, what I did do before was I, um, I clipped out her the pads underneath her feet to uh, basically that stops stops things getting caught in it, stops matting, stops knotting, but also that will help make it look neater when we're finished. And has anyone noticed when you look at the pads of a dog's feet, they actually look like uh, little teddy bears? is my YouTube oh yeah um I don't actually know if you type in explorer paws it should be there or if you type in my name James Juro G I W um that should hopefully come up but I mean I have got very little videos so I don't put much up on it at all. Um I used to do it and then I kind of lost the love for it but I'm gonna start putting up some more grooming videos because why not eh? difficult things at the group as a groomer is um when you've got like your thoughts on what looks good but you, the owners want something completely different and then they end up looking well you think they look silly or well, you've got to try and make the most of it and it's yeah it's sort of balancing the line of what looks good but also what your owner wants but i guess it looks subjective aren't they I'm well a bit asking. Yeah, crikey, Malamutes, my goodness, I tell you what, they are possibly, well, the problem is grooming them, that's fine, it's clearing up after them, which is the issue, that takes longer than grooming them, and also, I think, so is it the Wild Sanctuary, is your Malamute, or, like, they are the most dramatic dogs, aren't they, they're so dramatic, it's so funny, you look at them, and then they'll just be, Oh, causing a fuss because they have to have a bar. They're so funny, aren't they? Oh, I love them. They want to have you on to new song? Dreadful. Now, oh, I really appreciate that you're watching, by the way, people, because it just, yeah, I'm always nervous doing my first ever live and even if you haven't enjoyed it it's fine it's absolutely fine oh this is your song pops your hips don't lie secure secure as I am 
Vestindo com barba, você tem que falar bicho Como você ama, bonita Vem cá, tá chupindo, chupindo Não vai pra minha porta E o bem com o meu amor The tone's done. Yes! It's <laughs> lovely. So, the little toe's done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim her legs. Grim your walls on live, my goodness. Yeah, that would be exciting. People would love it. And it's like you have to wear a beekeeper's suit to stop the hair going up into your nose. Anyway, right, so we've done the feet. We have done the body. I'm now gonna work on the back legs. How's that pop? So, just get her to stand up. Good girl. And what I'm gonna do is just brush the coat out. And for, for this like sort of front part of the leg, I'm just gonna follow the natural shape of the leg because she wants to look, look lovely in her natural beauty. But I take her quite short. However, if you were doing a working dog, you would leave the featherings quite long because that actually um, it gives them protection. So like they'd be in, in the middle of forms, you know, all that sort of jazz. And that just means the forms will get caught up in the coat line in their skin, which is obviously more desirable. You got an itch? You just want to just the itch? There we are. Is there anything else you have to do? So yeah, so with their, uh, I mean, <laughs> wild wolves, they can do their own thing, but when it's like huskies, malamutes, those sort of dogs, so they've got a nice thick double coat. And the thing is with double coats is, the way they work, you've got, because of the double layer, it traps the air on the inside and that keeps them insulated. But if they're not being grouped and de-shedded, basically, is the thing we need to do with them. Um, it means their coat won't work efficiently, so they'll be hotter in the summer and colder in the winter. Obviously, they coat quite well in the winter, but when it's in the summer, the insulation does actually help them keep a little bit cooler. Um, so yeah, what you do is um, you want to just de-shed them. And it's, although they don't look massively different afterwards, it is, it's a big thing to do, especially for welfare. Um, like because in this country, obviously, it's like sort of wolf territory. So you want to be keeping on top of their coat. For the backs of her legs, I'm following the shape naturally here. And then when it comes to like her hock, I do what's called a padded hock, which sort of, it just looks like they've got a little bit there. And again, I'm taking it short because she's my pet. And it means I don't have to groom her so much if I can take it short. Some people, what you do, is they just completely clip off their dogs down the back, down the front, and that's absolutely fine. In fact, I've actually taught a few people to do that just because they don't tell their dogs to be groomers enough, but they've got dogs that need to be groomed. So I've told them, just taught them how to do it so they can do it at home. Because, I mean, for me, it's more important that the dog gets groomed than they come to me. So if you can't afford it, like for some dogs, it's like the spaniel's not so much because then it's less likely they're going to be matted. Um, but say if you've got like a cockapoo, like anything, poodle cross, doodles, all of those lot, they can um, they can just become like it just turn into a mat, and that is not good. That is not what we want. Pickleberry pet send me like, thank you. Oh, you go and argue with a skunk, enjoy it. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. It's my first one, and I'll do, I'll do more in the future, so who knows, you may, may watch it when I've got more than three watches, and that will be exciting. Hey, my darling girl, do you think you're done with that one? Shall we turn you around? Okay, so what I will do actually I'll show you the difference between the legs. So this oops, push. So this is the 
leg I've just trimmed. There's a few ends I need to get, but you can see the gist of it. Just follow, follow. And then this side is what it was like. So a little fluffy girl. Can you see? Yeah, there we are. So yeah, that makes it just, yes, you lovely girl, you are. So I'm gonna just, yeah, do the same to the other side now. Have I really muffed a groom up? If so, how did you save it? Yes, I really have muffed up a groom before. So what happened was, I've actually got a video of it on TikTok. Um, so I was grooming her, this uh, Archie, he's a cockapoo, and as I was grooming, the attachment comb fell off my blade and I took a massive chunk of coat out of his blade. Yeah, took a massive chunk of coat out of him and it was just like, it was sort of like he was going in for an operation, that's how short it was. And uh, yeah, it was not ideal. So I, um, yeah, blend, 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 basically is what I was doing. Blending the hell out of it to try and heat it up. And to be fair, I, I offered the groom for free to the owner because that shouldn't have happened. It was just an accident, but obviously accidents happen. And they were perfectly happy with it, paid full price. So I was chuffed with it. But to be fair, they are lovely dogs. I mean, lovely dogs, lovely people. And they, he was also the, uh, he was my exam dog when I took my exams, so they're, they're good to me. But luckily, that's the only major hash up I've done with them. I have known of someone who, and this is the sort of mess up you really don't want to do, is she um, was cutting the nails and just cut it off so short it was spurting blood everywhere, it was horrible. Yeah, they probably will ask for their money back. You're right, but I don't actually think they have TikTok, fortunately. So they, uh, they, they won't be hopefully asking. Them, well, I'll give them back anyway if they wanted it. The important thing to do when you are trimming, you do want to do it more than once. Like you brush your coat up, and then you look for your ends, and then you go for it again, just to neaten it up. And it just, yeah, it just makes it look a little bit better. Don't me, because we want you to look lovely, because you're a lovely girl. Well, let's find so, well, I've never felt so much pressure of grooming a dog. It's easier doing exams than it is grooming on the live. Yeah, blow the hair out of the way, because otherwise you're cutting hair you've already cut all the time. Which is not ideal. Okay, so. Mind your face, Ollie. She's being really nice and showing you her ass. That's what she feels about this, this experience. Hang on. What I'm going to ask you to do, little sweetie pie, is turn around and I'm just going to clear the inside. Good girl. And obviously I could scissor that, but it's easier just to clip it off all in one quickly. How long have I been grooming? So I started grooming um, I did I did my course in 2019 is when I started it and then I completed it last year and um, I'm sort of doing I do it alongside my dog walking business so I groom three afternoons no four afternoons a week and um, then the rest of my time is taken up with my dog walking but um, it is the sort of it is going to become my main my main job at some point because we're going to relocate. So that's when I'm hoping I'm going to go like dog, dog grooming only because in the, in the business side of it, it's just so much easier to, um, to organise your days when it's grooming because I have dogs booked in for grooms like say months in advance, whereas for walking, I don't even know what my week's going to look like until the Sunday, which is obviously not ideal. And the thing is, when you're, say, scissoring, it does usually give a better finish than if you're clipping. Good for you, you're a natural. Thank you, Wendy. You're a lovely, a lovely person. 
appreciate that. But yeah, so um, I don't know where I was going with that. Where was I going? I don't know. So what I'm going to do now, before I go on to the front half of her, I'm going to sort this tail out. So, like I said earlier, when they're usually docked, obviously she's not because she's my pet, I'm just going to clip onto the tail with my clippers like as far as it would be docked, so maybe like a spot, well I don't, you can't even see it in the video. And um, sort of like, I'm gonna clip slightly onto the tail, and then I'm gonna do a flag tail for the rest of it, because it just makes it look nice, looks neat, and that's what we like. And then when you're clipping, you just hopefully got rid of about all your knots and mats, anything before. Where are you relocating to? So we're we're already in South Devon in Plymouth, but I'm going to be into a different part of um, Devon. Back so we came from like the Torquay area, me and my other half, and we're going to go back that direction. I think we moved here for work originally, and then I became self-employed and she can work anywhere, so it's nice to go sort of back home as such. Right, you look nice, I think you look nice, girl. And what you do find is you are constantly seeing bits that need to be trimmed, and it's like the groomer's curse. You'll be watching, and you'll be like, oh, I've missed a bit, I've missed a bit, I've missed a bit, and you're just constantly having to trim it up. But you know what? As long as the dog's happy and you don't look too bad, you don't look too bad, then it's fine, isn't it? So, I'm going to trim her skirt line in. So, the skirt line should follow the sort of line you're doing when you're working, when you're working, say, like trimming in a skirt. So, she hasn't really got much of one, but if you do look on my TikTok, you can see there's a little golden spaniel up in my top three. She's got a nice skirt, and it would start from the elbow and go up to the tuck up. So when you're trimming, you want to follow that line as well, because it just looks balanced, looks neat, looks really good. And you keep giving me your paws, because you're a lovely girl. Right, okay, so if you just stand me up for me. What I'm going to do is just comb the coat down. And then trim the bits I don't want. But again, I keep her nice and short, because means I don't have to groom her so much. And in fact, the next time I groom her will be the day before I get married, which is exciting because she is coming to the wedding. She's going to be carrying the rings. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. She's looking forward to it. She's got a nice, nice flowery necklace to have, haven't you, sweetheart? Okay, so that is that. I'm just going to find these ends, which are fun neat. Hello. So, uh, <laughs> oh dear. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, we're going to marry your mummy, aren't we? Right, okay, so let's, let's do the next bit. So the next bit I'm going to do is her legs. And I'm just going to use the same blade as I have on her body and her uh, like back here, which is my 7F. I'm going to come down the front, I'm going to go down the side, but I'm going to leave the back and then I'm going to scissor the back to make it look, you know, look, look nice. She has these little feather rings and it should look good. So, quite often you'll find is when you go to do it, they'll pick up their legs. So if you hold the other one up, they can't pick up that one. And then... always the parts where the dogs are going to be moving about the most. So if you can do it like, keep them chilled out. It's always the terriers, they're the ones with their feet. 
for some reason. So, the other thing, careful thing when you're doing, doing like moving the front legs is their movement is front and back. You can't yank it to the side because that is not naturally where you would, uh, they wouldn't, shouldn't be able to move their legs like that, so that would hurt them. So you just want to move them forward. <laughs> you were such a lovely guy, I know. But yeah, so um, you just move them forward, out of the way, whilst you're trimming one. Okay, so that is that one done. I'm now going to shape it, and what I do is I shape into a D shape, which uh, yeah, it's just pretty standard, pretty much. People might call it different things, but basically it's going to go down to like as if it was a D. Take all that nonsense off. And when you're using your scissors, you, this again is similar to like clipping. You don't you don't just want to chop in randomly because that will you'll put layers into it again. So you do want to. You're doing fantastic. Thanks, Wendy. This is my first ever live, so. It's a little bit nerve wracking. Oh god, that's a wrong one, on it? It's fine, sweetheart. Let's have a look. So, can you see really? Let's have a look. So, here's. Here's our front leg now, which is neatened up a bit. I'll tell you what, the camera always makes it look worse. It's not me, I promise. Um, but yeah, so. And also, the other thing now is because I haven't bathed her, her coat isn't in like the neatest, straightest condition. So that's why you want to bath and dry properly, is because you get the coat, coat properly straightened and it looks good. Uh, well, right, right, this leg. So like she's one of the easiest dogs I'll ever groom because she is effectively just a clip off. Like there's nothing really too technical with her. Whereas if you're doing like a poodle, obviously that. It's going to be a bit more technical than this because you're going to have different lengths of coat everywhere. Right, so let's put D shape into that other leg. And then we're going to be ready to swap her face out. What is my name? I'm James. James JJ is what a lot of people call me, but yeah, I'm James. And the business is Explorer Paws, which is cool. Right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to take that off because that looks on me. I'm now going to get my blending scissors just to clear, clean up her chest a bit. Because I don't want to, those bits which are exposed, we don't like, well, we don't want to expose them. And believe it or not, if you're not a groomer, you don't realise there is actually a technique to scissoring. And it's not what you thought it was. Hi. Yes, you're a lovely girl. Bye. 
And if, any, if in doubt, I always go with blenders because you can't really mess up. Oh, so much dog hair in the face. You always want to look at your dog from different angles to make sure you haven't missed because I've found that I've actually missed a load on her legs. You don't see that if you only look at one angle. Right. Now, you find some spaniels do get a lot of coat on their face and nose and stuff, but she luckily doesn't usually get that. So the next thing I'm going to do for her is controversial, but I clip her head. I do, because I think, for me, it's just, I prefer it. But again, it's your own. Some people like them to have nice big wigs. And uh, yeah, some people don't. And then I'm gonna trim her ears in. And then she's actually gonna be complete. I don't think I've missed anything. And then I get to do the clearing up. I won't stay on live for the clearing up, because that's not what you want. But yeah, so anyway, let's do the head. I'm actually gonna use my 7S, but in reverse. And the reason I'm doing that, that'll make it effectively the same length as if it was a 10 blade, but it just allows the coat to lie flat and it just, for me, looks quite neat, so I like that. Anyway, let's go. And the other thing is here is, if like, if they've got really long coat up there and you've just done that, you can leave a line, so then you get your blenders and just go over it again. Just try and make it look neat. Good girl, aren't you? But I'm going to go over again, just to make sure we're, <laughs> we're there. You're wagging your tail, as you are. And then, with my brush, just brush the coat. Shouldn't really be using your fingers to do it, use your brush. And that looks lovely. So I can see bits where I've missed up here, which I'm just gonna get. Oh, sweet heart, yes, you look lovely. And if I was doing like, say, a show cocker, I'd probably clip the top thirds of her ears as well, because that sort of elongates the face. Looks, it looks quite cool. Again, that's like in one of my videos, in the, in the top three videos, the little golden cocker. She, uh, she was done in a breed standard trim, but breed standards if you actually, if you were using clippers. And um, I think she looks really good. But obviously I'm biased because it was me who did it. But anyway, so, right, Pop. Oh my God, so much hair on the face. Yes, you look lovely. Let me sort your ears out. So, when trimming the ear, you want to do it for, like, trim it and how it falls naturally. If she'd been bathed and blow dry properly, she'd have really lovely straight ears right now, but um, I couldn't be bothered to do it. And as she's my dog and not a client's, that makes life okay. But um, yeah, so, uh, mind your face. So you want it to fall naturally, and I'm just going to follow the natural shape of the ear. Some people like them quite square, some people like them other ways, but this does it for me. So anyway, right, got that there. And I've already cleared out underneath her ear earlier, so I don't need to worry about that as such. I'll brush it out again. And I will just trim off any nasty ends which look And what I'm also going to do is just run my blenders up the top top of her ears here, just to blend seamlessly into her head. Because otherwise I've got these straight bits of hair, she just looks like she's having a bad hair day. Which is obviously not what you want. Oh, you've been groomed, is it, sweetie? No, it's not. But be really careful when scissoring around the ears. 
because there are lots of little skin you can get caught. We don't want that. Right, Pop. I've got your other ear to do, and then we're done. They always do this as well. When you're trying to get a nice photo of your dog when you're done, they'll flap, they'll shake all the hair off, and you can't make them look neat. You know, you think, do not even do anything for this dog today? Right, where is this? Where are they? Excuse me. Oh, one, two, three, four. This one is bad. Okay, so I'm just checking about her ears are actually the same length. Right, hair off the table. Let's give her a once over because we are done. So, I don't know what you guys think, but. So there's her face, and you can see where she's got a nice flat head there, and then the rest of her is done. They know when the end of the groom is coming for sure. Oh, they 100% know. Uh, where did I train? So I trained at Ab Fab Academy of Dog Grooming. Thank you for my, uh, yeah, no, I've, we basically I said Ab Fab. It's um, trained under a woman called Eve Summers, who is a high, highly trained groomer. And basically she made sure we had to know our stuff before we did exams and stuff. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's also quite fun, I like learning about, yeah, with Eve, yeah, that's who I joined with, uh, who I trained with, sorry, and um, yeah, so we basically knew a load of stuff, it was great, and I enjoy nerding out and finding out as much as I can about the dogs, because if, I mean, if you take your dog to a groomer, you want your dog groomer to know, don't we? Do you? <laughs> You're such a good girl, you are. I mean, you are finished. Actually, there's one last thing I like to do, I put on a little bit of perfume, she is wonderful. I love Eve. We got on really well. So yeah, no, she's um, she is lovely. Trained me very well, I'd like to say. And um, yeah, so she now smells of coconuts, which is good. You, you smell of coconuts, right? Do you need to have a treaty? Oh, there we go. <laughs> that is my cue to leave. So thank you so much for watching. What I'll do is I'll put it on YouTube, and I will also. Um, I'll link my YouTube to my TikTok, so then you can actually see it if you if you are interested in ever watching it again. Thank you, Joey, as a time lord. Is your name actually Joey? That is the main thing, or is it something else? But yeah. Anyway, that is us. It is. Right, cheers, Joey. Thank you for watching. You have been my biggest fan today, and I love it. So, um, yeah, we're going to go for there. Thanks, Wendy. I'm, I'm going to give you a follow, actually, or do I already follow you? I'm not sure. I think I do. Um, but if not, I'm going to do it right now. But thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And yeah, it'll go on YouTube and I'll do another live in the future. How do I even stop this thing? I don't even know. Pops, they're saying bye to you. They're saying bye to you, sweetheart. Let's get her a treat. Yeah, she's angry because I'm not giving her a treat. Right, see you later.